This is flax that I grew at my allotment this year and it's a very fast growing plant, 100 days from seed to flower. When it's ready you pull flax, you don't cut it because the fibre runs right down into the, uh, the roots of the plant. You dry it and then you need to ret it which means rot it. The way I do it is called dew retting. You just spread it out and leave it on the grass and the uh, dew in the morning just sort of gets bacterial action going and it starts to break down the plant slightly and it kind of discolours it. And you just need to keep checking it, doing little, these little tests on it. When you wiggle it, the core falls away and you're left with the fibre. That one's breaking up really easy, so that one I knew was retted. Bundle it up and let it dry and then you can store it indefinitely. Normally with uh, flax, you process as much as you're going to spin it at any one given time. Once it's dried, we're going to just take this through a few steps. So the first step is the flax break, and this just smashes up the plant. And so you just pull it through and shake it, and you can see the chaff starting to come out. And you normally try and keep the root ends and the tip ends uh, together which makes a difference when you come to spin it. Keep going through until you've got as much of the stalk out as possible. So the fibres there you can see are starting to be, reveal themselves and that's what we're after. You then take it over to the uh, scutching board. So this is a scutching sword and this really just carries on what the brake does but it, it, it's quite an effective tool at getting rid of that extra stuff. have the short form which is you normally grow for the seed and getting the linseed oil out yeah. and this is the same plant but just hybridized. The next stage is called hackling. These are hackling cones. They just go down in grades so this is the coarsest. Start working from the edge in. Careful trying not to get your hand impaled on it. The same as what carding you do with wool. And this starts to separate the fibres, tease them apart and just pull out all the short tangled bits. The stuff that you're left with is your toe and that's the sort of origin of toe rags and toe ropes and all that sort of stuff. The toe is not a waste product at all, that can be uh, gone back through the combs and you pull out slightly shorter fibres but they're still really good quality and even the low quality stuff can be spun and made up into coarser stuff like uh, sacks or belts and stuff. See how even just through the rough grade how fine that's starting to get. Yeah. What you're eventually left with is, you know, something oh, that, super, nice super like. soft. What does that feel like, B? Does it feel like hair? Yeah. Yeah. Lovely and soft. See, so that's where flax and hair comes from, the expression. Like they're both beautifully highlighted. Yeah. Do you have flax and hair? I must do. <laughs> you can have long hair. Isn't that lovely hair? Does he look like Elsa Anna? The way I spun that was uh, you, you wrap these fibres around the distaff and that helps, it sort of like holds your fibre while you're spinning it into the spinning wheel and you, when it starts to work it's just like a continual feed, it just the twist goes up, grabs the next bit and you just go in. That's just to show what even quite a, a beginner you can spin really fine. Back in the day, everything from sails to clothes to bed clothes would all be made from it, yeah. It takes 100 days from seed to um, when it's ready to harvest. And I didn't have any problems apart from maybe bits of bindweed growing up the plants, which I needed to pull out. And also, it seemed that animals loved to lie on it. They were always crushed stems with foxes, um, you know, dogs, everything seems to love lying on it. So that was the main... Uh, <laughs> difficult to work around but yeah really easy to grow. <laughs> you could do the whole thing just totally with your hands. You, all you're doing is just trying to get rid of the core from the fibres. However you're going to get then it just turns out that these tools speed it up a bit. After I'd done with that one, you'd go down to a slightly tighter, and it just does the same thing. It would just pull out a little bit more. 
and just keep going through it. And then once you're at that stage, that's you at, at the end of the process and you're ready to spin. You're always going to have a bit of this, this stuff see its way through into the final thing, but when you're spinning, you'll just stop and just flick it off. And those are nettle fibers down there. And so that's pure nettle fiber. And that's um, you know, very tough, like a really tough sack sort of thing. Slowly getting it finer and finer. I mean, it's still... It's all nettle, yeah? Yeah, this is all nettle. I'm thinking that with um, you know, a bit of washing, beating, leaving it out, washing it, it would soft, soften up quite quickly. And once you release the inner bit from flax, you're good to go. With nettles, you've got this very outer bark. And this outside bit is what gives it its rough texture. And it's actually, it's actually really hard to get that off the fibers. So I found the best way of doing it, when you're out walking, you just like roll it and just keep rolling it. That starts to quite quickly soften it up from this rough uh, vibe. You can see the fibers starting to, to come apart. I found you just get a blunt, blunt knife and you just start scraping it. You make a lot of toe, but you save that. That's all usable with a bit more processing. Scandinavia, Northern European countries seem to have quite a long, unbroken tradition of, of nettle fibre production. It seems wherever an alternative fibre became available, nettles would drop really quickly, which leads me to think they were always quite a difficult labour-intensive fibre to get at. In its rough state, that would be absolutely fine. You'd get some wicked strong cordage out of that. But to take it a step further for making um, underclothes or stuff, you know, that you need to put a whole lot of layer of effort in. But it was said that during the World Wars, the Germans, because of difficulty getting hold of cotton, put a lot of effort into uh, making a nettle fibre for uniforms and stuff. When they've analysed bits of uh, uniform from the battlefields and stuff, they find it sort of cotton with bits of nettle in, maybe a bit of flax, it's sort of whatever you can get your hands on to sort of keep it going. Before metal was around, you realise that everything would need to be lashed and tied. The amount of, you know, you just could never have enough cordage. It made me realise that people must have been making cordage. Every time they sat down and chilled out, you're just roping up some cordage. And